Awesome. And up next, let's cover use ref hook. It's a lot like use state. So it preserves the value between the renders. But the difference is that updating use ref does not trigger re render. So remember when we work with use state, every time we update the value, we trigger re render. Now, it's not the case with use ref. Very often, use ref is used to access DOM nodes, but there are some other nifty use cases as well. Of course, it really depends on the projects you're going to be working on, but at least in my experience, since I don't use use ref to access form inputs, use ref is not something I use in every project. But once in a while, there's a very specific use case where use ref is the right tool for the job. We're going to start just like with the other examples where essentially we want to look for 07 use ref star and then 01 use ref basics. And of course, I want to import that in the app JSX and I want to navigate to that file. And notice over here, I already have the state value, I have handle submit that just prevents the default, and I have the form as well as the heading one with the button. And as I'm clicking, I'm increasing the value here. And you'll see why we have this kind of setup in a second. So essentially, if we want to start working with user ref, just like the other hooks, we want to import that from React, and we want to come up with a name. So in this case, we're not looking for an array of values. We're just looking for one value. So I'm going to go here, const, and then we just come up with a name. So in my case, I'm going to call this container. As a quick sign out, I actually like to think of useref value as a container. Again, that's just my mental model. And we want to go here with useref. So that's the hook. And then we want to pass in that default value. So in my case, I'm going to start with null. But keep in mind, you can pass here whatever you want. And then if we log, you'll notice something interesting. If I log the container, and if I take a look at the dev tools, you'll see that it is an object, and it has the current property. And the current property is equal to that null. So current property is always going to be equal to whatever you set here as a default value. And yes, React behind the scenes is going to set this one up as an object. So notice, we did not do anything. Basically, we just set up the use ref, and this is what the React return. Now, once we have this one in place, essentially, we have two ways how we can set this value. Because of course, you don't want to always keep it as null. One way we can set it ourselves, basically using some kind of functionality, which is going to be actually our second example, or you can use this container and set it equal to any of the DOM nodes. Now, in our example, yes, we will use the input because it's somewhat common, but keep in mind, you don't have to. I mean, you can set it equal to any DOM nodes. And if I remember correctly in the project, we're actually going to use the nav bar just so we have multiple examples. But yes, this is pretty typical to set it equal to an input. If you remember when we talked about controlled inputs and form data API in the previous section, I mentioned that there's another way how we can use uncontrolled inputs. And essentially that is using use ref hook. So once I'm done with my long speech and all that, here's what we want to do. We want to find the element. Again, in my case, that is going to be the input. And we're going to go with the ref. So that's the attribute we want to use. And we want to set it equal to what? Well, we want to set it equal to a ref container. So whatever you created with the user. Now, we don't see anything because, of course, this is essentially the initial render, correct? So in order to see our actual value, we need to set up the use effect. So in here, I'm going to go with use effect. And then we'll pass in the function. Now, I don't care about the dependency array. I just want to showcase that essentially once our initial render takes place, we run this use effect and in there we'll see a different picture. So in here, we're going to see a ref container that actually has this input. 
again, something important to keep in mind that, yes, we have two ways how we can set up the user effort. We can either set it equal to any of the DOM nodes. And the reason why we see that right now, because this runs after initial render, correct? And this one is happening during the initial render. That's the difference. And we can also, for example, set it ourselves. Again, that is going to be our second example. And once current is equal to our DOM node, what can we do? Well, pretty much anything. Once we get the DOM node, I mean, sky's the limit. For example, I can grab the value. And this one, of course, I'll do it in handle submit. So again, this was just a showcase that after the initial render, now in the ref container, we'll have access to that input, but we'll actually use it over here in the handle submit. So in here, effectively, we want to grab the value by using value property again. This is just coming from vanilla JS. So if I'm going to go over here in the handle submit, and if I'm going to take a look at the value, it will actually give me whatever is typed in the input. So if I'm going to go here with const name and ref container, then current, again, I'm accessing the property. And since the property is an input, basically I can run with value. Again, this is coming from vanilla JS. You access the DOM node. And if it's an input, you can actually run dot value. And effectively, this is just going to get us whatever the user has typed in. And then again, we can do something about it. Now that something in our case is simply going to be logging the name. So notice this essentially is null. Let me comment out. We have quite a few logs here. But then if I type something and if I press submit, check it out. Now I'm getting this value. So this is how we can set up again uncontrolled inputs using use ref. So that's the first example we're going to look at. And in the following video, we'll take a look how we can use use ref to avoid running some functionality on the initial render. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second.